Hello everyone, this is Mumbo and welcome back to another episode on the Hermit's Craft server. It's episode 145 and today I just want to start things off by saying that I have just watched Iskal's reaction video to my prank that I built last Sunday and oh my word, A, it's a hilarious video, but B, it looks like he's actually going to keep this thing. So here we go, flying in and then... <laughs> <laughs> there he is, but he has been he's been swapped out So we don't have we don't have diorite anymore He has been swapped out to have to just be a cube a cube of white concrete powder And you know I have to say he does look better. I mean there's no denying he actually looks better. He's missing his thumbs though Iskal you can't just sever sever his thumbs like that <laughs> Uh, but this looks absolutely brilliant. Whoa! Is this just diorite that's been left on the floor by Iskal? Iskal has mined out the sign and he has just left all of the- all of the diorite on the floor to despawn. Don't worry, buddy. I'll pick this up. I'll store it up in a chest for him. Oh, it's despawning very- it's, in, it's despawning in front of me. No, I, I gotta try and get this. I wanna get as much as possible so I can dump it in a chest for Iskal. Saw you dropped a few blocks on the floor when removing a build. Wouldn't want you to lose them, buddy. It got there just before they despawned, mumbo. <laughs> This was totally unplanned today, but going over to Rendog's place to get through to Iskal's place, he had a map, and it is much better than mine. I'm going to be totally honest, it looks so much cooler than mine. And I think his was slightly more zoomed in. I want to do that. I want to get a more zoomed in map. Right, so let's have a look. If we do a bit of this... Yeah. Okay, this, this is much more detailed than what I have going on here. Alright, we're going to make a big... Yeah, this is- it is, isn't it? Yeah, by- by a massive amount. Okay, we're gonna make a big, big map of what the base looks like. That piddly little map is a bit pathetic. Right, I've done the first row, and it looks brilliant, and it's got me thinking, I reckon we should- we could even extend it across over to the town area, or maybe even have separate maps. So maybe a little map for the town, and then maybe a little map for TNT land, just have maps of all the different areas of my base. I think that might be the way to go here. In goes the top corner, that's the top left. I think this is going to be the start of the island, and then there we have that area up there. So we've actually covered the town in this zone, which is quite nice, and you can really get a good impression of what the actual base is looking like, but I do still want to have a map of TNT land, so I'm thinking, where else can we map out? Where else have we built on the Hermitcraft server? Still haven't worked that one out, but this looks really cool. Look at this. That is great. That is so much better than it was before. It was really, really ugly in this area beforehand. That is a really, really nice entrance down into the storage system. Whoa, I have just come over to the games district to capture that little snapshot there, which that is arguably the most frustrating snapshot I possibly could have taken because the labyrinth, which is what I'm trying to take a snapshot of, really is just in the top corner. But this place looks crazy. I need to do another build over here. I've been meaning to. But wow, there has been some serious work going on over here. This is brilliant. Speaking of things being brilliant, I am chuffed to bits with this. Look at that. So we have got, we've obviously got the base. You guys have seen that one. We've got TNT land over here. So you can see the two, the two farms, the tree farm, cobblestone farm. There's the TNT. And then you can see all of the pipes going around there. That looks brilliant. And then on this side, we have got the dirt hut. That is the dirt hut right there. And then we have got the labyrinth that has been cut in half, but there it is. And that kind of, yeah, that, that kind of shows off a lot of my main milestone builds that I've done on the Hermitcraft server. Obviously, most of my stuff is underground, which is a little bit silly because you can't see it in a map, but this looks really, really good. I am so, so happy with that. Anyway, onto my proper plan for today's Hermitcraft episode, which I think I could safely say is quite a bold one. <laughs> What I want to do is I actually want to make a spoon counter. The reason that I wanted to place in these maps here is because... Oh boy, here we go. I want to build the spoon counter in here. So we're going to have two seven-segment displays. So we're going to have one on this side and one on this side. So we're going to have double-digit spoon counter. 
and the display is going to actually be in the water face and then we're going to have glass around it which is going to stop the water from flowing down and breaking everything we're going to have one on either side and then the redstone is actually going to be encased inside glass back here Ooh, I have no clue how well this is gonna go. I'll be totally honest with you. Right, so here we have the seven segment display that we're going to be using to actually create the spoon counter. So this is definitely not waterproof. And the water is going to wrap around like this. So we're just going to have some glass, a little bit like that out the front. And then, okay, we need to place in some glass a little bit like this. And we're just going to need to make sure that the entire thing is fully covered. I... this is actually... Okay, so we're gonna have to compact this bottom area, but I think we can make this fit within like a little cube. This should give us a rough idea of how big it needs to be. Well, first off, that looks really, really cool. I'm excited to see that built, but also more importantly, yeah, it's not actually that big. Okay, let's pop onto the Hermitcraft server and get one of these things constructed. Now, I gotta say, this is looking super cool already. <laughs> it's looking so, so good. So look at that. So those are going to be the two digits of the spoon counter. <laughs> wow. I mean... Can I fit another number in the middle? I don't think I... Hmm. I can. I totally can. And that's got me extremely excited. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place the glass going up and around like this. So we've got five blocks going up in the center there. And this number is going to be slightly raised up higher. So it's going to be one block taller, I think. If I just take a look. So we've got the glass there. So yeah, it's going to be one block taller. So the numbers are going to kind of go up and down like that. I think that's going to look amazing. Oh, I'm so excited. Oh. My base is centered around two blocks. Totally forgot. So it's not gonna work. Maybe I could make like a spoon mural. Oh, that's so disappointing. I, could you not hear the happiness in my voice? <laughs> I was over the moon. Now I've actually made a bunch of progress on this build so far, but I'm, I'm totally out of glass. And I'm hoping, ugh. Okay, I was hoping that the blaze farm had some serious blaze rods in here, but by the look of things it doesn't. So we're going to have to do ourselves a bit of a blaze farming session so that we can get all of the blaze rods so we can put them in the super smelter so that we can get a ton of glass. Or alternatively, I could just use the coal that's in my storage system, which is what I did. And now this thing has been fully, fully filled in with glass. So you can see out the back here, we have got two very big glass boxes that are very dark on the inside. But this is where our redstone is going to be going. Now, how does this look from above? Very curious to see on this one. Okay, you can barely see them. And realistically, you can barely... I mean, you can, you can kind of see that there's something going on there. But you'd have to be looking for it. So I'm impressed. They're kind of staying quite stealthy. And our little numbers on either side here, they're looking really, really good. Okay, uh, I think the way that I'm going to build this thing is I'm actually going to build it from the bottom up. So I'm not going to build it in any way that makes sense. I'm just going to build it layer by layer because we've got so little space to work with in here. Yeah, I, I might have been a bit premature with the redstone building talk. Considering, well... <laughs> It's a little bit wet in here, a little bit, little bit damp. Two things, number one, layer by layer has gone out the window, I'm not doing that anymore. And secondly, things have gone wrong at the very first hurdle. The very first few circuits I placed were in the wrong spot. This is not a good start. Guys, this may well be one of the stupidest things I've ever done. You see this? This redstone design was constructed specifically for my 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 countdown for my rocket launcher on Hermitcraft Series 4. It doesn't... It doesn't... It doesn't work. <laughs> oh my word. So now we're going to have to do some pretty serious redesigning of my old seven segment display design, which is going to be pretty fun. And uh, 
Yeah, fairly interesting. I hope that this goes well. Which it has. So I have redesigned this thing so that it will actually fit within the area that we've created. We just need to punch out a few extra blocks out the back. I've had to do some serious redesigning of all of this circuitry. So it's now a big old mess. But that means that it's going to fit underneath the glass that goes here. So that's perfect. And yeah, chuffed to bits with this thing. So let's pop back onto the Hermitcraft server and start building. Right, for the second time in today's Hermitcraft episode, the pistons are now all in place. So now it is time to do the decoder circuit, which translates the cauldrons on the inside of this piston feed tape onto what actually comes onto the screen. Which I I, I think might be done, maybe. <laughs> uh, yeah, I almost got myself stuck. I actually had to break my way out of there. But no, I think I think that's done. Maybe, as I say, potentially, but possibly. <laughs> if it sounds like I'm going crazy, it's because I am. I I've been playing a lot of Minecraft today, but anyway, now I've got myself into a spot where I can actually see what's going on. Yeah, it looks like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we've got all of the comparators running out. They should hook up into all of the different segments of the display, hence the name seven segment display. So, um, okay, that is actually all I'm going to do with this one for the time being. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to build this outer casing on the other one, and then we'll get into the business of placing in all of the cauldrons, because I haven't actually mapped those out yet in the redstone testing world. Oh, I forgot to light up the inside there. That is not a good sight. Yeah, you see, this is this is where things begin to get tricky. I have, I've built the entire thing. This is now all up and running, so we need to place in... Well, I guess we need to place in the sticky piston with the redstone block on its face. So that goes next to that one, and then there goes the redstone block. And I am stuck in this gap right here, so I guess I'm going to have to kind of break my way out. Uh, drop myself down onto some form of slab down here. And then make sure that this final piece of redstone connects into where it's going. There we go, so that redstone block will extend down, it will run up with this redstone, and a repeater powers that segment right there which is the last segment to be powered in the entire machine so there we go this one is now all fully built and fully constructed as well and should be working we just need to do the fillings now which to plan out is the most long-winded part of any piston feed tape seven segment display building process because you have to work out where each one of the cauldrons is going to be going so here we have a completely clear piston feed tape and then if i want to make a zero I then need to place in cauldrons wherever we want them to light up. So obviously we want, well this top cauldron actually corresponds to that. So that's one thing. And then yeah, we're going to need the top line to be done. So that means that we have to go around the front here and place in a cauldron there. Yeah, you guys get the picture. But thankfully that is now all done. Now I'm looking at this nine, nine, do I put a line at the bottom of the nine or do I just leave it like this? I think I just leave it like this. But anyway, if we hit this button, that should wrap her back around to zero. And then we get one. Is the one meant to be on the other side? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like, no, the one can go there. Yeah, we'll, we'll leave the one there. Then there is two and three, and so on and so forth. You guys get the idea, this thing is now working, so now I have to build the internals, this thing, actually on the Hermitcraft server. No, it was bound to happen. Ah, oh, It was so bound to happen. Thankfully, doesn't seem to have done that much damage. I hold shift quite a lot while I'm playing, and when you're putting the water into into the things. Yeah, you have to be quite careful because, well, because things like that can happen. I think, as far as I remember, it's just that. We got so lucky then. I'm a little bit nervous because this thing should be saying zero. And it does. Okay, that is, that's brilliant news, but I have just thought, now that I've placed in every single one of those cauldrons, I haven't even tested this thing. I haven't even seen if the pistons fire. Well, I have myself a button, so let's just give it a go. I suppose there's there's no point waiting around. Well, that looked pretty good. That looked like what I'm supposed to be seeing, and we should be seeing one. Yes. Oh, that was that's a big relief. I mean, we've had we've had a few things go wrong so far in today's Hermitcraft episode. 
But if this says two, then I think it's safe to say that the machine is actually functioning. And that does. Oh, brilliant. Okay, what a relief. Right, so that's one of them. Let's get the other side done. Which we now have. So there we go. We have got zero, two. At this point in time, the spoon counter is on two spoon moments. I guess we can say that one of the spoon moments was me building a a spoon counter that only counts to five. That was pretty stupid. <laughs> I still can't believe I did that. So, uh, so that could be one of the spoon moments. And then the second spoon moment can be me pouring water down the center of that thing because that also wasn't that fun. But anyway, next up in this project, we actually need to link these things up so that we can get some double digits going on. So I guess we'll have to create a redstone pathway going across and then we'll have to create the carryover circuit, which is what these empty pistons are for. Now that may have sounded complicated, but all it is is this little cauldron set up here that then sends a signal through to this piston that is over on this side, which will then go down like this, power this redstone line, which will then power this repeater, which will activate this circuit once. So that means that when this goes past zero, so say it reaches zero, then it will activate this one so that this one ticks over so that it shows 10. Okay, does that make sense? So every single time this one cycles round, obviously when it goes from one through to nine and then back onto zero, that means you have to add another digit to this seven segment display. So then that's how you get your double digits. And all we've got is a simple little bridge going across. And that is the spoon counter all completed. All you have to do now is actually do the input. And you know what, considering we have this big thing in the center here, I feel like that should be the input. Now the way that we've had to do this has actually ended up being quite interesting, but hopefully it all works. So that redstone block will extend down there. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I guess we should probably run that into a repeater here because this is now a redstone line. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then we're gonna have to take this back on itself. So that's eight again, nine, 10, and then 11. Running into the input for this system. So I'm hoping, fingers crossed, that this is now going to work. So let's pop back up onto the surface. You can see that we have got the button in place right there. And I've also, I've added in, <laughs> I've added in. See, I don't really know what to do with this big area. I thought I'd just place in a little bit of Prismarina and some sea lanterns. I think maybe you can give me some suggestions as to what I should actually build in this space here But here we have the plus one spoon moment button. So currently we're on one spoon moment when we hit this button We have now got two spoon moments. Yes This thing works. We have actually got ourselves the second spoon counter of this Hermitcraft season. The first one got taken down because it was in a bit of a random location. This is much, much better. And more importantly, it just looks amazing. <laughs> Look at it, this looks great. Why have I never built things like this in the water walls before? This looks really, really cool. And now all of the blocks and all of the rubbish has been removed from the front of this thing. So we can see it in all of his glory without all of that nonsense. And yeah, really, really happy with this thing. I, I'm t I wanna see what it looks like actually from the outside. To be frankly honest, it looks even cooler. I mean, being able to see through into those redstone contraptions, that is, <laughs> this looks so good. That is such a cool idea. Now I have to say, I kind of came up with the idea for this episode pretty much on the fly. I started recording over at Iskal's base, didn't really have a plan for the episode, <laughs> came over to my area. After seeing Ren's map, I was like, oh, I, I really want to build a big map of my base. And then having built the map zone, I thought to myself, you know what? That actually makes a pretty good space for the spoon counter. Kind of came up with the idea in my head of placing them on either side. And then there we go. We've ended up with this thing. It's been a massive pain in the backside project because obviously, you know, we, we were originally not building. We weren't really building a proper seven segment display to start off with. So <laughs> that was a bit of a, that was a bit of a failure, but we got there in the end and I'm, I'm super chuffed with it. This has worked out so much better than I expected and it's actually one of my favorite additions that we've made to the base this season. I'm trying to think. Yeah, for sure, look at that. I'm sorry, I don't mean to blow my own trumpet here, but like this has surpassed my expectations 
by about a million miles. It's so, so good. Anyway, I'm going to stop rambling on now. I hope that you've enjoyed this episode on the Hermitcraft server. If you have, please draw to that like button. And if you really loved it, then make sure to subscribe. But thanks for watching, guys. This has been Mumbo, and I'm out. I'll see you later.